The Kesanuma Bay Crossing Bridge Construction Project, which MM Bridge Company, Limited is in charge of, is officially named National Route 45 Kesanuma Bay Crossing Bridge and was built to replace the old bridge damaged in the Great East Japan earthquake. The project began in 2012 with the focus on selecting the route for the bridge. After thorough investigations and considering the opinions of the local community, the construction of the bridge on the seaward route crossing Kesanuma Bay was decided. The actual design process commenced with priority given to measures against natural disasters such as earthquakes and tsunamis. The bridge's placement was ensured not to obstruct rich fishing grounds or aquaculture sites. The design and color scheme were harmonized with the surrounding natural environment. Preliminary design began in March 2012 with wind tunnel tests and earthquake resistant design in 2013 and detailed design in 2014. The land portion was constructed as a typical steel box girder bridge, while the sea portion was planned to be constructed as a cable stayed bridge spanning the sea, supported by two main towers. One of the distinctive technical features of the Kesanuma Bay Crossing Bridge is the implementation of a novel design method called damage control design. This method involved careful analysis and examination of potential damages caused by disasters such as storms, earthquakes or tsunamis on each component of the bridge. The Kesanuma Bay Crossing Bridge was a very complex and challenging project due to its scale and the unique construction environment. Based on an investigation of the seabed ground, strong foundation piles were driven to support the bridge. This is an important process for withstanding earthquakes and tsunamis. Piers were constructed on top of the foundation piles. These are important structures that support the weight of the bridge. The main tower is a huge concrete structure, and was constructed by stacking blocks called segments. This process was carried out using cranes and special construction methods. The main girder suspended between the main towers is an important part that forms the skeleton of the bridge. This process posed a difficult challenge of erecting the main girder over a distance of approximately 1000 m, the longest distance of construction over the sea in the world. The deck was laid on the main girders to create a roadway and sidewalk. Asphalt and concrete were laid on the deck to create a passable road surface. Protective fences and lighting were installed to ensure safety. Learning from the lessons of the Great East Japan Earthquake High earthquake resistance and tsunami countermeasures were implemented. The world's longest offshore construction distance was achieved in the erection of the main girders. This demonstrates the high level of Japanese bridge construction technology and was achieved by overcoming many difficulties. The bridge opened in March 2021, taking nine years and four months from project start. The bridge spans Kesanuma Bay, Miyagi Prefecture, with a total length of 1,344 meters. The nickname, Kanei Ohashi, was chosen from names submitted by the public. Kane comes from the word kaniru in Japanese, which means to fulfill hopes, dreams, and wishes. The Kesanuma Bay Crossing Bridge is expected to serve as an emergency transport route and is designed not to get flooded from tsunamis. It is a testament to the resilience and recovery of the region after the devastating earthquake.
Puente de Vidalta is a striking example of modern bridge engineering. This cable-stayed bridge, located in a steep wooded ravine in Mexico City, is a testament to innovative design and construction techniques. Given the bridge's location in a steep ravine, clearing the site and preparing the foundation would have been a significant challenge. This involved extensive earth-moving excavation to create stable platforms for the bridge's supports. Due to the terrain, deep foundations would have been required to ensure the bridge's stability. Techniques like drilled shafts or driven piles have been employed to anchor the bridge securely into the ground. The single tower of the Vidalta Bridge is a distinctive feature. Its construction would have involved precise engineering calculations and careful execution. Constructed using reinforced concrete, the tower would have been built in stages, with temporary supports used until the structure was self-supporting. Installing the cables that support the bridge deck is a complex process. High-strength steel cables would have been used, and they would have been tensioned to precise specifications. Specialized equipment and skilled labor would have been necessary for this phase. The bridge deck, made of concrete, would have been built in sections. Formwork would have been used to create the desired shape, and concrete would have been poured and cured. The deck would have been carefully connected to the tower and cables. Once the main structure was complete, finishing work would have included items like waterproofing, paving, lighting, and safety barriers. There are some interesting facts about the Puente de Vidalta. The bridge was designed to withstand seismic and wind forces, making it a robust structure in a region prone to earthquakes. The bridge has a maximum slope of 3.2%, providing a smooth transition from the residential complex to the STM Avenue. It also includes a wide sidewalk for pedestrian circulation. Protection measures were implemented in the ravine, such as a single access point to the base of the bridge and a system to harvest 100% of stormwater to prevent spills into the ravine. The surveillance zone for access control was constructed with a metallic structure covered with frosted glass, featuring a contemporary design. The construction of Puente de Vidalta would have presented several engineering challenges, working in a ravine would have required specialized equipment and careful planning. The type of soil and rock in the area would have influenced foundation design and construction methods. Achieving the correct tension in the cables is critical for the bridge's stability and performance. Balancing structural integrity with the bridge's visual appeal would have been important.
The Val de Luna Viaduct is located on the N-232 highway in the province of Teruel, Spain. The viaduct was constructed to span the Val de Luna ravine, providing a safer and more integrated route for the N-232. The N-232 is a crucial road connecting Zaragoza and the Bajo Aragon region to the Mediterranean Sea. The viaduct features multiple piers and spans, designed to blend with the natural environment. The viaduct consists of 12 spans, each approximately 100 meters long. This design helps distribute the load evenly and provide stability. It includes various alternatives for construction, such as pre-stressed beams and post-tension slabs. The use of pre-stressed beams and post-tension slabs enhances the strength and durability of the viaduct. These techniques allow the structure to withstand heavy loads and environmental stresses. The construction faced challenges due to the narrow and complex existing road, as well as the high altitude of the ravine, which is around 900 meters above sea level. The viaduct helps to avoid the dangerous icy conditions in winter and reduces maintenance costs. The viaduct eliminates a bottleneck on the N-232, improving the connection between Aragon and Castellan, and ultimately to the Mediterranean Sea. It reduces travel time, boosts local industry, and alleviates congestion on the highway. The Val de Luna Viaduct is a significant infrastructure project that enhances safety and connectivity in the region. The incremental launching method is a construction technique where bridge segments are cast in a stationary casting yard located behind one abutment. How does it work? A casting yard is established near one end of the bridge. This yard houses the formwork and equipment necessary to cast the concrete segments. The segments are typically cast one after the other, ensuring uniformity and quality control. A powerful hydraulic launching system is employed to push the completed segments forward. This system utilizes hydraulic jacks and sliding bearings to move the bridge deck along the piers. A temporary steel launching nose is attached to the leading edge of the bridge deck. This nose minimizes cantilever stresses during the launching process and provides a smooth sliding surface. It distributes the weight over the piers during the launch and is dismantled once the bridge reaches the other abutment. Temporary and permanent supports are erected on the piers. The temporary supports hold the bridge deck during the launching process while the permanent bearings are installed after each segment is in place. Each segment is pushed forward a predetermined distance, typically equal to the length of one segment. As each new segment is cast, it is integrated with the previously launched section, creating a continuous bridge structure. Post-tensioning tendons are often used to strengthen the bridge deck and control stresses during and after launching. These tendons are typically installed and stressed after a few segments are launched. Once the bridge reaches the opposite abutment, the launching nose is removed and the final segment is cast and integrated. The permanent bearings are finalized, and finishing works such as roadway paving, railings, and lighting are completed. 